I've got another tear tray for you and this tear tray is a beach themed one. I couldn't help it. I was feeling the inspiration. Hey everybody, welcome back to Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose. Yes, in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. What do I have going on for you for today? This year, Dollar Tree got in the cutest DIY beach decor. Oh my word, I couldn't pass it up. I felt the inspiration to do a tear tray in the beach theme because they had so many cute items. The inspiration was just flooding. I know I said that I was gonna do a bee and sunflower one. Those items are a bit hard to come by, but I am collecting items for it. I am still feeling the inspiration for that one. So I think that may be the next one that I bring to you. But because Dollar Tree has so many great beach themed pieces, I couldn't pass up the chance to do a tear tray in this theme. Today you're getting about 20 new DIYs. These are quick, easy, and budget friendly, and they are using items that you can find at Dollar Tree right now. So I'm gonna quit my Gavin, let's jump into it, and let me show you what I have in mind, what I have in store for you for this beach themed tear tray for the summertime, because why not? Because we can, because the items are at Dollar Tree. So keep your eye open for it. Okay, let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. The paint colors that I will be using for today's tray are some of Waverly's chalk paints in the color of agave, maize, hazelnut, and celery. Along with those, I'll also be using some of Hello Hobby's Swan White. Now, this is not a stark white. It has kind of a tan undertone to it, which goes perfectly with sand. And I'll also be using some of Craft Smart's Coral. Since this is a beach themed tear tray, let's start off with the word beach. This word, I wanted to kind of give it that ombre feel. So I'm gonna start off with the agave at the bottom, which is the darker of the blues that I've chosen for this tray. In the center there, I'm gonna go with the celery, And there at the top, I'm gonna go with the Swan White. Now it is really easy to blend these colors together just by putting a bit of water on your brush and using a clean brush that is, and just kind of go over where those colors meet and they're gonna blend nicely and you won't have any harsh lines. Dollar Tree has this beach decor out by Shore Living. It's amazing. They've got a lot of fun pins and DIY embellishments. Would you look at how cute these whales are? We're not gonna need the clothes pins, but the whales themselves are cute. These dolphins are stinking adorable. We've got some seahorses and the colors couldn't be any more perfect, right? How about some seashells? This really reminds me of Easter and all the fun embellishments I found at Easter. These adorable fish, we've got some sea turtles. And I will tell you, I bought these boats, but I did not use them in this tray. When it comes to painting these embellishments, I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm not looking to put a ton of detail. So with something like these shells, I'm gonna give them a good base coat of the Swan White. And if you really look at this white, you can tell it is not a stark white. I am loving it. If you use a stark white, it really is gonna stand out too much. If you use a cream, it's gonna be a bit too creamy. So I would definitely, in all honesty, go the route of Swan White if you can, or maybe an ivory. No, I, I think Waverly has fresh linen that is equal to this actually. And so I would definitely go one of those two routes. While the base coat of the Swan White is still wet, I'm gonna go in with some of that coral 
and I'm gonna lightly just brush over the wet paint, giving it a nice blended look, just adding a bit of color to these shells. It really is that simple and I feel like it gets the job done. And so to this beach sign, so it isn't just a beach sign, what better embellishment to add than a seashell at the beach, right here at the bottom, just to add a little something. This is a fun one. This sun, take me to the ocean, I guess plaque, stand-up plaque. Yeah, that's what we'll call it. I'm going to take the take me to the ocean part away from this. And by putting several coats of paint on this, it is going to fill it in. And you are going to be none the wiser that it was once there. And I'm going to put my own saying on it. If you want to keep that saying, I say go for it. To the top part of this, I am going to add the celery to the bottom part. I'm going to add the agave. And to the top there, since it says sun, we might as well go in with some of that maize. For this here beach tiered tray, I am working in collaboration with Linda, who has designed this embellishment pack, which is a mixture of die cuts and vinyls. These embellishments are available in Linda's Etsy store at a discounted price now. You can get these embellishments for instant digital download, which you're gonna pay a dollar for, or you can have her cut and send them to you for the discounted price of $5. You can find the link to Linda's Etsy store, guess where? In the description box below. And so with that, this stand-up plaque is going to have a vinyl decal that says, beach in summer. Making this stand-up plaque say sun, beach, and summer. It doesn't get any more summer and beachy than that, right? And why don't we just top it off with some of those cute wooden embellishments, say a shell, and maybe a dolphin here at the top. Oh my word. Yep, a galvanized seashell screaming my name. Only the seashell has holes in it, which we don't need. So to remedy that problem, I'm gonna put just a bit of masking tape here on the back of the shell. Why am I doing that? So when I place some spackling on the front, filling in those holes, it actually stays. When you try to put spackling in something that is galvanized, it typically falls out unless there is something like tape in the back. And so I don't want holes in my shell. If you want holes in your shell, you can have holes in your shell. I don't want holes in my shell. I'm gonna go with a good base coat of that mm -hmm, swan white. I love this white. It might be my new favorite white. I feel like it could be very rustic too and work in a farmhouse DIY. We'll have to see, I'll have to try it out. Once I give this a good base coat, when I go in for that second coat of that swan white, while it is wet, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go in with that coral and give it that seashell look. Give it a bit of color. I am loving this coral with the blues and the hazelnut that I am going with for this tiered tray. It just adds some subtle color and I just feel like this coral is such a fun beach color anyway. We've got a cute little shell die cut embellishment to add to this. When I add an embellishment like this onto a piece like this, I like to use some Dollar Tree's foam tape just to elevate it up off the piece, again, giving it some dimension. Oh, this is a good one. You're gonna need one of these Dollar Tree crates and it's gotta be this exact crate or it won't work. These holes, we don't need the holes in the crate. So guess what I'm gonna do? Use some Dollar Tree spackling and fill those holes in. You're not gonna wanna use a wet sponge while the spackling is wet on this piece, so you're gonna wait for it to dry, then go in with a fine sandpaper and just smooth out those sides there. I didn't show painting this piece because it's a pretty basic piece. Went in with the swan white on the top section, the celery in the center, and the agave in that bottom section. What is this piece an alternative to? This piece is an alternative to my wood books that I add to every tray. Because this crate has three sections, look at that. It doubles as books when you paint the different sections. What a fantastic alternative this is for those who don't wanna cut wood. 
Honestly, I may just use this crate from now on because it's so easy and it's gonna save me a trip to the hardware store. So to these books, yes, I totally did it out of order. Ask me why, I don't know, but it's gonna say the beach is my happy place because it really is. I always add embellishments to my books. Right now, Shore Life has the Sand Dollars and Sea Stars. They come in a three pack. Great buy for $1.25, I might add. So to these, I am going to give them both a base coat of the Swan White. Of course I am. If you wanna leave them the way they are, you can, but they don't match all my whites, so we gotta stay consistent. After I've got that base coat of the Swan White, for the sea star, I'm gonna go in with some coral and add just a touch of color to that. To the sand dollar, I'm gonna add a bit of hazelnut, just adding some detailing to the center and to the edges. I thought I'd top the top of my books off with this sand dollar, but of course I want it elevated because I don't put anything just flat on a surface. I have these wood beads on hand. I figured they'd stick a bit better than the foam tape. So I'm gonna hot glue just about three of these smaller beads on that aren't going to show, then just hot glue it right there to the top of the book. And now we have got an elevated sand star on the top of our books. I was feeling like the bindings were a bit too plain and so I took this fish that was on the clothespin, just took off one side of the clothespin and look at that, the other side elevates the fish up off the book. Look at that, how cute is this? This DIY, it's a repeat, using these alphabet blocks. If you've got these in your stash, you might as well add them to your tray. It's an easy addition and it's a versatile piece that could be done for any tray, so why not? To these blocks, I decided to go with two celery blocks, one agave block, and one swan white block. What am I gonna put on these blocks? The word sand, cause why not? Beach, sand, perfect. Usually I stack these blocks. Today I'm just gonna hot glue them together side by side. Because why? We need one of those cute wood embellishments added to the top of this. Two seashells on the top of this sand. That's just what I'm gonna do. Really? A beach themed fairy garden house? Oh my word, it couldn't be any more perfect than this. And the colors are spot on. Although I'm not much like in the surfboard and I thought I'd add a bit of the yellow, just an excuse to add more of that maize yellow to this. I'm gonna go ahead and customize this cottage by just painting some of those small details to suit my beach theme. And what else am I gonna do? Oh my word, wait for it. Have you seen these hula skirts? It's raffia and it's all tied together. So I'm gonna place some hot glue here on the top of my beach house. I'm gonna take some of this raffia that's tied together here and just place it right on top, adding a grass roof to our beach house. Oh my word, such an easy piece just by adding some simple additions to it really takes it to what level? The next level, it's those fine touches. You can also find the seashell in that mini fairy garden section. Nothing else needs to be done to this. It was meant for this tray. For this one, you're gonna need one of these smaller wood crates. You're gonna wanna fill in those holes as well. That is a must for this. To this wood crate, I'm gonna give it a nice coating with some of Waverly's hazelnut. This color sand is perfect, but you can find it, Dollar Tree. I only had this much left, so I went in with some white sand first and topped it off with this perfect colored sand here. You know where I'm going with this, right? Where there's sand, there's beach. Would you look at these fat quarters Dollar Tree has? Perfect, right? I'm gonna go with this one today. What am I gonna do with this fabric? Well, I needed something round, so I went ahead and took the top of my spackling here, turned it upside down, trace in the circle, Ah, that circle is not big enough, but that's okay. Taking my peeking shears because I want a decorative edge around my circle, I'm just gonna use that inner circle as a guide and make it a bit bigger. 
because I'm making an umbrella. For my umbrella, I need to stabilize the center with whatever those metal things are that are in an umbrella. I don't know the correct verbiage of it, but I'm going to use toothpicks because they'll be perfect and I'm going to cut them down to size. Once I've got about eight of them, I'm going to hot glue these toothpicks to the wrong side of the fabric. You can see that I'm leaving a center there because why? Every umbrella needs an umbrella pole, right, to put in the sand. What better for an umbrella pole than a paper straw? Well, you could always use a piece of dowel if you want, but since I've got the paper straws on hand, that's what I'm using today. Seriously, how perfect are these? Only, in my opinion, they need a bit of customizing because they don't match my tray. That's an easy fix. And to what I'm gonna call my beach sandbox, I'm gonna add a cute little beach towel with that fabric. How about that adorable surfboard? Oh my word, this piece is so stinking cute. We've gotta add some cute flip-flops that we customized just a bit. So easy to do, such a versatile piece that you can easily change the color to suit your decor style if this one isn't it for you. And to this, we need to add our umbrella as well. Oh wait, have you seen these adorable mini shells at Dollar Tree? I thought a couple of these would be perfect to hold our beach towel down. The solid color hazelnut box wasn't doing it for me, so I went back over it again and added some of that swan white, giving it, yes, that brush blended look. What better to add to the front of this sandbox than a sea turtle? Sea turtles love to burrow into the sand. And so again, using one of those wood beads, I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue it to the sand turtle itself and put it right there on the front of our beach sandbox. A pail. Of course we're gonna add a pail to this, but not in the way that you think. This pail needs a good coating of some of Waverly's agave just to brighten it up a bit. For this DIY, I am using Plaster of Paris because I can't seem to get my hands on the caulking by DAP that you can get at Dollar Tree. That would work perfect too. Went into my stash because I had some Plaster of Paris for those tiles that I've been making. Gonna put that Plaster of Paris in the pail add a bit of water. It's not an exact science for this. You just want to add enough water until you get a nice thick consistency. If your plaster of Paris looks a bit too runny, don't be afraid to add more of the plaster of Paris to it. Once I've got a nice thick consistency, I'm going to take a piece of dowel that I pre-measured out. This one is about four inches tall. I want it in the center because this is going to be a sign in a pail to hold it in the center if you just put a couple pencils or a pen there it's going to keep it in place dollar tree has these adorable sticker packs right now i loved this what is this a life ring yeah life ring right it says lake house on it how stinking cute is that the colors are perfect for this on the front of this pail i thought what better than to add a cute seahorse no real reason, I just really like the look of the seahorse. Oh my goodness. And to this pail, this sticker pack has these cute little, what are these? Some kind of beach plant that I thought I would add to the sand itself, making us a cute beach house life ring sign. Yeah, because why not? These stickers are a great alternative if you're not going to go the route of using Linda's embellishment pack. This next DIY is one of my favorites on this tray. It is so easy and there's really not much to it. Here I'm using a piece of copy paper. I cut a strip that's about an inch wide and I'm going to roll it. It doesn't need to be super thick just enough to roll it there, cut it off and hot glue it so it stays rolled. I'm gonna add a piece of twine to the center of it, tying it in a knot and leaving just a couple of small tails. You know where I'm going with this, right? These mini corked bottles have been around Dollar Tree for a while. I got them in two different sizes. I'm gonna go ahead and take that cork off. I know you know where I'm going now. 
I've made a funnel out of paper and I'm going to add just a bit of sand to this. I don't know if they really have sand in them or not. I would suppose that they probably don't because they'd sink, but I'm going to add sand because I like the look of it. And yes, this scroll, it's going to go inside this corked jar, making it a message in a bottle. How stinking cute is that? Fun fact, Message in a Bottle is hands down one of my favorite books and movies by Nicholas Sparks. Well, Nicholas Sparks is hands down my favorite author. Such a simple DIY, but really it is one of my favorites because, yes, fun fact again, I am a hopeless romantic. This DIY ties in with the last one. Look at that, looks kind of like a scroll, right? So to this, I am going to give it a nice good coating of the Hello Hobby Swan. Once I've got that base coat down, yep, I'm gonna go in with some of Waverly's Hazelnut because I feel like this will age, I guess, the scroll a bit, give it a bit of that dirty look and just really add a soft, subtle look to it. Adding a bit of a personal touch to this, I wanted this scroll to say, message in a bottle. And why not? Let's just add one of these cute fish because we can. I wanted to add this jar of shells to the tray, but I just didn't want it to be a jar of shells. So I went ahead and emptied out those shells, put a bit of sand, replaced a few of the shells, corked it back up, and I thought that this would be perfect next to those message in a bottles. Truth be told, when I saw these planked fish at Dollar Tree, these were the piece that inspired me to do the tear tray and this is where I got my color scheme from. This is a beautiful color scheme. This is such a fun piece. Nothing else needs to be done to it color wise. I want it to stand on my tray, so I'm gonna add a Jenga block to the back there. Trick of the trade, easy way to make just about anything stand up. And to the front of this fish, Linda has come up with just a really cute die cut that I added some foam tape to the back of just to what? Yes, elevate it up off of our fish. This would be another one of those repeat DIYs because these tags came in a 25 pack, so why not add them to each tray? They're easy to DIY, they're fun to embellish. And so to this tag, I'm gonna give it a good coat of the swan white and to this swan white I'm gonna add a bit of that coral because I really like that coral and we need to tie more of that into this tray. I was loving these DIY wood seahorses and I thought that this tag would be perfect to add it to so this seahorse is gonna get some of that hazelnut along with yes some of the swan white. I want this tag to stand up so I'm using a Jenga block and I'm gonna glue it to the back of the tag itself. And this seahorse, it's gonna find its way on the side here where the hole of the tag is, kind of switching it up a bit. This is a bit of a different tag that I've done in the past, but how fun is that? So cute. This tag definitely needs this beach die cut embellishment added to it. Yep another one of those repeat DIYs. These wood frames are perfect because they add, yes, height and they're easy to embellish. I went ahead and painted it with the two tones of blue. Linda made up this anchor die cut that fits perfectly in these. Now, if you can't find the round one, this die cut will fit in any of these frames because the opening is very universal. To these, I'm gonna add the seahorse and the whale. Didn't even paint them because I was loving the color. I feel like the color brings out the color of the anchor. It all just kind of ties in together. And to this, Linda added some starfish to her embellishment pack that I thought would be fun to add on one side of this frame. Can I just tell you, I love that Dollar Tree is now carrying letter tiles. I use these all the time in my tiered trays. 
You're getting 26 in a pack, which means you're really only getting one of each letter. Since Beach doesn't have duplicate letters, that's what I'm gonna spell out. I want my tile letter word Beach. Oh my word, that was a mouthful to stand up. So two Jenga blocks are needed. And I figured I'd finish this off too with one of those cute wood embellishments. For this one, I'm gonna be adding these nautical wood beads. You know I like to add beads to each of my trays. The color of these beads is perfect. It goes perfect with that swan white. Have I said swan white enough in this video? Each of the stars is gonna get painted. I'm gonna do two with the agave and two with the celery. And that's all that needs to be done to this. Easy addition to this tray. Have I said that yet? There's so many of those on this tray. Wonk, wonk, wonk. Yes, this would be an example of Abiza, my son's dog, getting a hold of these wood beads before I actually got a chance to take a picture of them. My word. These DIY ornaments are a must because they are so easy to DIY and they're perfect for a tear tray. To this starfish, I wanted it to stand up, so I am going to add a Jenga block to it, standing the Jenga block up because we don't want the Jenga block to show at the bottom of the starfish. I did this with some of the swan white and some hazelnut. And to this starfish, I'm gonna add a sticker from Dollar Tree sticker pack that they have right now that says, wish upon a starfish. How perfect is that? To this whale, I added some of the agave as the base coat with a little bit of the swan white mixed in. Added the swan white to the water on the top of the whale. I thought it'd be cute to make this kind of a two-dimensional mommy whale and baby whale. So I took this whale off of the clothespin, added one of the beads, and I'm gonna hot glue it to this one, yes. And because it is 2D type, we don't need a Jenga block in the back because it's gonna stand up all on its own. How cute is that? And repeat, I did the same thing with the sea turtle. You might want to pick up one of these fishing nets because it'd be fun to drape it over your tear tray before you add all your fun DIYs to it. Who is today's KB Creations crafters of the day? First one's going out to Lorna May, who's bringing to us her recreation of my DIY St. Patrick's Day tier tray. I am loving it. We've also got one from Maria Gomez, who is also bringing to us her St. Patrick's Day tier tray. I am loving them both. Thank you both so much for sharing your creations with us today. How stinking cute and fun did this tray turn out? I love it, such a fun tray for summer. It is definitely switching things up, changing the pace a bit, but why not? Change is good. I hope you all enjoyed the 20 beach themed DIYs, quick and easy ones that I brought to you today using, guess what? Items that you can find at Dollar Tree now. So come do to your trays with me, cause they're fun. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you leave down below 
well, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please, because I am. Bye for now, everybody.